In this video, we will cover a topic which is not covered in your textbook, but it's full, it still falls under the scope of single sample tests. So you will get some additional material on ClickUp to work through. Now, we are specifically looking at the population variance and hypothesis tests for the population variance. So in your study guide, you'll see exactly what you need to do, which is quite simple. It's just the test procedure for the variance. So test procedures that we've already worked through are all the different tests for the mean and for the proportion. We'll add to that the variance test today. And then in the next video, we will cover B values, which will cover all of these different tests. Um, so General procedure, again, you'll see some differences here. So your null and alternative will de be defined in a similar way from before, but now we'll be dealing with the variance. We'll also look at a new, uh, the sample statistic to use for the specific case and the sampling distribution of that statistic. And then the rest of the test will be pretty much the same. So our rejection region will just be from a different distribution, and then we'll be calculating our test statistic, making a decision and a conclusion. Now, if we look at tests for the variance, like I said, our null and alternative will now be related to the variance. Um, so sigma squared, notice that it's sigma squared and not sigma. So we're not doing a test for the standard deviation. If we have a question in terms of standard deviation, you first need to translate it to variance and then you can perform your test. Then our sample statistic that we're going to look at is the sample variance, S squared, and we will go and look at the test statistic given here, which is just a uh, um, function of the sample variance, and it should look very familiar to you because you've already encountered it in Chapter 6, um, and we have referred to it quite a few times since then. So this is on page 320. Please refresh yourself if you cannot remember all of it. Um, but in uh, chapter 6, we found that this statistic has a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, provided that our original observations were sampled from a normal distribution. So we'll look at that assumption just now again. Then our decision rule will depend on the um, value of alpha, which is given. And if we don't give that value, then you can just assume that it's 0 0.05. And our rejection region will now be defined according to the chi-square distribution. So in the similar way, way that we did the other distributions. So all I want you to notice here is that the area for the chi-square distribution, the area that's given is the area in the upper tail. So if we look at a right-sided test, um, then that area will be here in the upper tail. So this is how we will denote it. Um, so n minus 1 degrees of freedom and alpha in the upper tail. What you should also notice here is that this distribution is not symmetric. So we can't use symmetry um, like we did with the t and the normal distribution. So when we want to get a critical value, let's say for a lower tail test, so this first one here was for the upper tail test. So that's the one here. And let's say we want to do a lower tail test. I'm just going to denote that with a circle so that when we look at it here, we can see this is corresponds to that one. Then we are still referring to the area in the upper tail. So if the area in the lower tail, because we're doing a lower uh, tail test, that area is alpha, then the area in the upper tail must be 1 minus alpha. And of course, if we're working with a two-sided test, you will have to have 0. Point, uh, well, sorry, uh, half of alpha in the lower tail, half of alpha in the upper tail, and you would have to adjust for that. So then our test statistic, when we calculate it, notice again now that I'm writing this in lowercase the s squared, where before when I just wrote it as a random variable, it was in uppercase. So when we do the calculations, we'll always just write lowercase. And then we'll do our decision and our conclusion as before. So just in summary, on page 320, you will find the information about the test statistic. And our assumption is that we have a random sample 
from a normal distribution. If the data is not from a normal distribution, so this refers to our original x values, if they are not from a normal distribution, then we cannot do this hypothesis test for the variance. So this is just a summary again of everything that was on the previous slide about the rejection regions and all of that. You will notice that I called the test statistic Y, where over here it is called um, chi-squared. I don't want you to get confused with the um, notation though, so the distribution is also called chi-squared, so I've decided to just call the test statistic Y, and we'll do that um, in all of our work. So the additional material will also refer to the test statistic as y, uh, sorry, as chi-squared. So you can just go and replace this, all of this with y values. So it's just so that you don't get confused about when we're referring to the distribution and when we're referring to the test statistic. Now, as I said before, if we have an upper tail test, alpha will be in the upper tail. Um, quite straightforward. If we're dealing with a lower tail test, our rejection region is in the lower tail alpha, which means the area to the right is 1 minus alpha, so we'll refer to this as chi squared 1 minus alpha. And then for two-sided, it's alpha over 2 in both sides, so if you want the upper tail chi squared value, the critical value, it is chi squared alpha over 2, and the bottom one will be 1 minus alpha over 2, because if you take 1 minus alpha, and you add alpha over 2, you end up with 1 minus alpha over 2. So let's look at our first example. So a company produces machined engine parts that are supposed to have a diameter variance no larger than 0 0.0002. So diameters are measured in inches, which means that the variance will be in squared inches. So a random sample of 10 parts gave a sample variance of 0 0.0003 and we want to do a test at a 5% level of significance specifically that the variance is equal to 0 0.0002 against the alternative that the variance is greater than that. So you may assume that the engine part diameters are normally distributed. So our first variable, x, is the diameter of the machined engine part, and we've just mentioned here that this is normally distributed. Then s squared is the variance of the 10 sampled machined engine uh, part diameters, and because we have this normal distribution, we'll be able to do this test. So the diameters, the original values, are normally distributed. Now, Let's extract the information from the question first. We note that our hypothesized variance is 0.0002, and we've seen that our sample variance is 0.0003. In, our sample size is 10, and alpha is 0.05. So our null and alternative have already been given. We can see we're doing an upper tail test, and because we have the normal uh, our data from a normal distribution, we know that under the null hypothesis, our test statistic, which I've just called y, which is equal to this formula here, has a normal uh, as a chi-squared distribution with nine degrees of freedom. So if we draw a sketch of that, this is what the sketch will look like. And because it's an upper tail test, we need an upper tail rejection region. So now we just need to find our critical value. So for that, we go to the chi-square tables. Um, so the area in the upper tail has to be 0 0.05. And we find that over here. Since we're dealing with 10 observations, we know we will have 9 degrees of freedom. So if we go down this row all the way, then we get to our critical value, which is 16.919. So we can fill that in on our sketch as well. Now we know our test statistic when we want to calculate it. Everything's written in lowercase. And we can just plug in all of the values from our summary. So be careful not to swap S squared and the null um, value because then obviously your answer is going to end up being wrong or it's very likely to be 
um, wrong when you make your decision. So we have that value there and it is 13.5. So we can indicate that on our sketch and we can see that 13.5 is definitely not in the rejection region. So that means that we don't reject the null hypothesis since the test statistic value is outside the rejection region. And to conclude, that means that at a 5% level of significance, we do not have enough evidence to conclude that the variance of the machined engine parts exceed um, 0 0.0002 square inches. So that is our first example. Now the next example, I want you guys to try on your own first and see if you can answer this because the homework I'm giving you is a little bit more challenging than this. So first see if you can do this question and then unpause the video again. Okay, so we have here an experimenter is convinced that the variability in his measuring equipment results in a standard deviation of two. So immediately you're seeing the word standard deviation here and that should make you very alert. Now, 16 machine measurements yielded S squared equal to 6.1. So this is my sample variance. So you can see here we have a, sample uh, a population standard deviation and a sample variance, not the same units. So be careful of that. Then we say here, does the data contradict this um, conviction? What would you conclude if you chose alpha equal to 0 0.05? You may assume that the measurements are normally distributed. So we'll start with x. x is a single measurement. And we've just said here that these measurements are normally distributed so that's very important then s squared is the variance of 16 measurements so we don't have units here otherwise i would have included units but we don't have no idea what the units are we don't know what the measurements are for so we just this will be sufficient for our definition now if we summarize the data given in the question we know that our hypothesized standard deviation is two, which means that the hypothesized variance is going to be four. Our sample variance is 6.1. We have a sample of size 16 and alpha is 0 0.05 given in the question. So our null is going to be that the variance is equal to four. So you can see I've converted from the standard deviation of two to four now and we will just work with four from now on and then we need to decide on our alternative so this guy's convinced the variability is um, four so variance of four and does the data contradict this conviction so he does not indicate a direction here or there's no indication here so we just want to know if it's different which means it's a not equal test now if we look at the the assumptions here we know that the data is from a normal distribution which means that then under the null our test statistic will have a chi-square distribution with 15 degrees of freedom because we have 16 observations so again if we look at our sketch in this case we are dealing with a two-sided test which means that there's two rejection regions. So we need to get this um, value now from, or these two critical values from our tables. So if alpha is 0 0.05, it means the area in the tail end, the upper tail end will be 0 0.025. And if we take one minus alpha, it is 0 0.95 plus the 0. Uh, 025. Sorry, my pen is misbehaving quite badly tonight. So that will give us a value of 0 0.975, which is over here. So we would go to 15 degrees of freedom. So our lower critical value is going to be 6.262. And our upper critical value is going to be 27.488. Now, if we go back to the question, we can add those values onto our sketch. 
and then we can do our calculation. So again, write down your formula as always, because then you're not going to swap values. If you have your formula and you have your summary, there's no reason for you to go wrong anywhere. So if we plug these values in, then we end up with a um, test statistic value of 22.875, which if we put that on our sketch, we can see is not in our rejection region which means we don't reject the null hypothesis since our value of the test statistic is between the two critical values. So we would only reject the null if we were below the lower one or above the upper one. And that means that at a 5% level of significance, we do not have enough evidence to conclude that the variance of the measurements differ from 4. We cannot contradict his conviction. So... The last thing that I want to show you is just your homework. So please work through this homework exercise and see if you can answer these questions. So this is a slightly more challenging question um, in the sense that it does combine concepts from previous chapters as well. So please read the questions very carefully and decide what is being asked and then do your calculations according to that.